Vermicomposting or worm composting is a great addition to any school garden. Basically, you can take any food scraps from plants like this and turn them into a beautiful soil amendment for your garden like this. Teachers especially find vermicomposting useful in the classroom for various reasons. One, it requires very few materials, which we'll show you. Two, they're pretty simple to maintain. And three, the worms serve almost like a class pet that your kids will love and find meaningful learning experiences from. There are many types of bins you can use for vermicomposting, from wooden boxes to plastic totes. There are a couple features you need to keep in mind. The bin you use will need to have a tight-fitting lid to keep out the rain. You also want to have air holes for aeration, a bottom to keep pests out, and ideally you want your tub to be 12 to 18 inches deep. Indoors or in the classroom, totes like these are ideal. Outside or in the garden, there are lots of different options. Here is a hanging worm bin called the Swag, and here we have a stacking system. This worm view bin is ideal in an educational setting. Every day a worm can eat about half its body weight. So when you're planning the size of your bin, you should think about how much the worm can eat. A bin about this size right here could eat about two containers of this a week. A bin about this size can eat about a quart of food per week. So now we're going to talk about starting a new worm bin from scratch. This is a Rubbermaid container and we've just drilled holes along all of the sides of it so that air can come in and out. First I'm going to add bedding. For bedding you can use shredded newspaper or other cardboard or paper products or you can use leaves. It's important that the bedding be about as moist as a wrung out sponge. So this newspaper we pre-soaked in water and I'm going to add about a foot to the bottom of the bin. To start a new worm bin you want about one to two pounds of red worms, also known as red wrigglers. These are different from earthworms or night crawlers and they're best suited for vermicomposting. The best way to get them is from a friend's worm bin. We bought this container of red worms at a garden center. It was $15 and this is about a third to a quarter pound of worms. Since we want one to two pounds of worms, we're going to add other worms from an existing compost container into our worm bin. Once you've added your worms and your bedding, make sure to cover them in a bit of bedding to keep them moist and comfortable. Now you're going to want to wait five to seven days before you feed the worms anything. They need this time just to acclimate. Once a week has passed, they'll open up your bin again and add their food scraps. I'm going to start with just a small amount of food scraps and watch and monitor to see how long it takes the worms to get through this food. Again, your worm population will change over time as they reproduce and they'll be able to go through more and more foods. The types of food scraps you'll want to add are primarily foods that come from plants. Fruit and vegetable clippings and trimmings, tea bags, coffee grounds, and the like are all fine, as are breads and grains. You can also add eggshells, but no other animal products are really recommended. To add the food scraps, again, make a little hole, add your scraps, and then cover them in bedding. Burying it helps prevent fruit flies and also helps the worms find their food. And now I'm going to cover up my worm bin and let them do their work. To keep this worm bin healthy and active, I'm just going to use my spray bottle to maintain the moisture of a wrung out sponge, checking it every few days, and add food as needed. When I'm not doing those things, I'll leave the lid on the bin. Worms are quite resilient, which is why composting with worms is relatively simple. Worms prefer to be in the temperature range of 55 to 80 degrees. So if you live in a very hot area, consider putting your worms inside or in the shade. And if you live in a very cold area, make sure to keep them covered or bring them in during freezes. If your pile gets too wet and soggy or slimy, think about adding less food or more dry bedding. That will help to maintain a healthy and happy pile. If you notice fruit flies in your pile, you might want to consider covering it with more bedding. So after about four months, your worms will have churned much of their food waste into some of the best compost available. We call it black gold, or worm castings, and it's actually their poop. 
The easiest way to divide the worms from their castings is the divide and migrate method. What we will do is we will stop feeding on this side and begin feeding here with bedding and food. The worms will slowly migrate over within a month or so, leaving behind their nutrient rich castings which we'll use in the garden. A great way to separate your worms from their castings when you're working with kids is to dump out the contents of your worm bin onto a tarp or newspaper and they can separate them out by hand. Go over how to treat the worms gently so that you make sure they survive the experience and kids can go through and pick out the worms and put them back into the bin. Another fun way to do this with students is to use a sifter. You can take the contents from your worm castings and pour them onto a sifter or a nursery tray like this one that works well as a sifter and have your students shake. What's left on top is big and still needs work decomposing so it can go back in the bin. That includes your worms. What's left down below should be your beautiful nutrient-rich castings. In my hands is the sifted compost from our worm bin. All the nutrients that were in those food scraps, the worms digested, and now they're in this amendment that will be great for plants growing in our garden. You can have your kids come out to the garden, choose a plant, and sprinkle it around the plant, giving thanks and completing the cycle in the garden. We also like to have kids then lean down and say, thank you, green plant, giving it a little carbon dioxide to help it along.